I feel that these talks encourage members to remain steadfast in their faith and to make choices that lead to eternal happiness and salvation. The leader's messages, I feel, conveyed a clear refusal to sway or capitulate to worldly pressures, instead calling for a deeper conversion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me show you. All right, here's the exciting part. Comparing the themes and messages from the general conferences of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from 40 years ago to the, re to the recent April 2024 conference, which ended yesterday. All right, brothers and sisters, welcome back to the program. The day after General Conference weekend, it was amazing. I want to talk about uh, how we hear a lot from people that have come on the program. I've talked about it. Others have talked about it. We always talk about Teddy Bear Jesus talks, things like that. Are the brethren, are the 15 men capitulating to the world? Are they placating? Are they giving in? Have have the has the um, have the talking points changed in general conference? Do we still uh, emphasize keeping the commandments, things like that? I'm here to tell you, yes. I Well, I'm here to t show you. So I wanted to share with you some powerful moments from um, the recent general conference this weekend uh, that really hit home for me. It is clear that church leaders are standing firm on our beliefs and they're not giving in to what the world might expect from us. So they're still talking about hard stuff. They're still talking about um, keeping commandments. <clears throat> and then in a minute, I'm going to show you how that compared from 40 uh, to 50 years ago. Elder D. Todd Christofferson emphasized the importance of being valiant in the testimony of Jesus Christ. So during the April 2024 General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS leaders, the leaders of our church, provided numerous examples and teachings that underscore their commitment to maintaining the church's standards and commandments without swaying or capitulating, like I said earlier, to the pressures of the world. These examples that I'm about to show you, and I'm about to show you how it compares from 40 years ago even, that it's exactly the same, brothers and sisters. They have not changed their message. You see it amongst the scholars. You see it amongst middle management and others, right? You see it amongst the other parts of the administration and even in the members of the church, maybe even some bishops and stake presidents. I wouldn't say too many stake presidents, but I'd say some bishops and others that may, might make others feel that things are going to change or lead them um, to think that. I don't see that. There's no teddy bear Jesus and I'm going to, I, I didn't see it in the conference. So the examples that I'm about to show you highlight the church's steadfast dedication to its foundational principles. Um, and the, it, and the encouragement for members to live in accordance with the gospel. For instance, elder D Todd Christofferson, he emphasized the importance of being valiant in the testimony of Jesus Christ which includes nurturing and strengthening one's testimony through actions such as prayer, scripture study, Sabbath observance, and the temple worship. He illustrated this through the story of, remember the Hawaiian Latter-day Saint family who chose to remain true to the church despite being publicly embarrassed by a local leader. Uh, Elder Cook spoke about the atonement of Jesus Christ. He spoke of making sacrifices to achieve spiritual goals. That's hard knock stuff there, brothers and sisters. Sacrifice. Look at the, pay attention to the key words. Okay. Observance to the Sabbath. That's a commandment, right? 
Strengthen your testimonies. Be valiant in your testimony. Um, sacrifice to, to achieve spiritual goals. These aren't talking points of capitulation. Uh, he shared a story about a couple from Colombia who endured uh, a challenging five-day bus journey sitting on the floor to be married in the temple. The story highlighted the couple's willingness to make present sacrifices for future spiritual blessings demonstrating a refusal to compromise their standards for convenience president nelson and there's a lot to talk about with president nelson <laughs> i we're going to be di dissecting a lot of these talks the next six months i believe uh his teachings on the future of the church and the preparation for the Savior's second coming. That's a reality. That's not, that's not Teddy Bear Jesus stuff. He, because he emphasized the, important, the importance of living according to God's commandments to receive the greatest happiness in this life and eternal life in the world to come. He stressed that the restored gospel of Jesus Christ encourages members to think about the future and make decisions based on where they will lead rather than focusing solely on their own personal desires and their personal present ambitions. Uh, and these are just some examples. We had many, many talks. Okay. We could go on forever. Because there were others just like this that showed and and stick stay tuned, stick around because I'm going to show you <clears throat> um, how this compared from 40 years ago. Also, uh, just to let you know, I have products that I sell uh, and I get a percentage of anything that you guys purchase and it helps the program, brothers and sisters. Also, if you want to become a member of the channel, that monthly helps me as well. Um, thank you so much. And if you would like to donate to the program, uh, you could do that through Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. And that you can find in the descriptions section of the video. Um, so check out and browse the products, <clears throat> if you will. All right, so Neil L. Anderson discussed the significance of temples and the blessings that come from temple worship. He highlighted the temple as the gateway to the greatest blessings God has for his children, underscoring the importance of priesthood keys and the unique position of the church um, in possessing these keys. So we're not talking about Talking about things that have not changed. These things have not changed. So these examples from this conference, which ended yesterday, illustrate the church leader's commitment to upholding the commandments and standards set forth by our Savior, Jesus Christ. I feel that these talks encourage members to remain steadfast in their faith and to make choices that lead to eternal happiness and salvation. The leader's messages, I feel, conveyed a clear refusal to sway or capitulate to worldly pressures, instead calling for a deeper conversion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me show you. All right. Here's the exciting part. Comparing the themes and messages from the general conferences of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from 40 years ago to the, re to the recent April 2024 conference, which ended yesterday. We talk about uh, Teddy Bear Jesus talks. We talk about, and I've felt that way before too, but maybe we weren't looking hard enough. Or maybe... Uh, I don't feel that keeping the commandments has ever been something that these 15 men have changed their stance on. 
I do not believe that they're going to change their stance on the living Christ or the proclamation to the world. A lot of people thought that Elder Kearing was going to be uh, a little bit more liberal than the others. I didn't feel that. He constantly reiterated conditions and, and keeping the commandments. So, as far as 40 years ago, comparing it, we can identify several enduring principles. We can identify several principles and similarities that have consistently been emphasized by the church leaders. And you'll see that these are enduring themes and that they highlight commitment still. Gospel principles, despite the changing world around us. All right, for instance, emphasis on Jesus Christ and his atonement. Because what is the atonement? We all understand it's never changed. The atonement uh, includes repentance. So 40 years ago, here's the 40 years ago, talks frequently centered on Jesus Christ, his life, his atonement, and the central role he plays in the lives of church members. This focus aimed to deepen members' faith in Christ and encourage them to follow his example. For instance, April 1990. So if you go back and you compare, I ran this through AI. This is amazing. I'm going to be using AI a lot. This is crazy. If you go back and you compare April 1990 talk conference to this conference we just had, uh, and you will see the similarities. For instance, let me give you some names uh, of talks. President Monson, M. Russell Ballard, Small and Simple Things, Recognizing the Hand of God Working to Bring About His Purposes. Um, Home First, that was Rex D. P Pinnegar. The Spirituality of Service, uh, that was Derek A. Cuthbert. Richard P. Lindsay, ye have done it unto me. The past year has given me a new vision of the Savior's words as recorded in Matthew. Matthew was quoted a lot in this last conference. Russell M. Nelson, thus shall my church be called. Wow, that was 1990. <laughs> Today I would like to speak about a name. Wow, but a nickname may, be, may offend. So he was preparing us, right? L. Tom Perry, family traditions. David B. Hate, filling the whole earth. Hans B. Ringer, choose you this day. Spencer J. Condi, some scriptural lessons on leadership. F. Melvin Hammond, the resurrection. I met Elder Hammond and felt the Holy Ghost when I shook his hand when I was a youth. Joseph B. Worthen, personal integrity. Neil A. Maxwell, endure it well. These haven't changed. So let's go back here. All right. So did I read uh, two? Th okay, so that was 40 years ago on emphasis on Jesus Christ and his atonement. April 2024, the, re the recent conference also placed a strong emphasis on Jesus Christ, his atonement, and the blessings that come from living a Christ-centered life. Leaders shared messages that encouraged family members to build their faith on Jesus Christ and apply his teachings in their daily lives. How about the importance of temple worship? 40 years ago, the significance of temples and temple worship was a key theme with leaders encouraging members to attend the temple regularly and live worthy of participating in temple ordinances. April 2024, President Nelson specifically emphasized the importance of temple worship, and the unique blessings that come from attending the temple. He spoke about priesthood keys and the role of temples in accessing the highest blessings of the gospel. You know, I have been guilty of saying that we aren't hearing the same thing we heard a long time ago, but... Uh, okay. Yes, you're right. We don't hear a lot about the... No, we do hear about the wars and strategies once in a while. I think it just depends on who's up there talking. 
Family and personal development. 40 years ago, leaders spoke about the importance of strengthening families, raising children in the gospel, and personal development through living gospel principles. April 2024, similar themes were evident with talks providing practical advice for family relationships, personal development, and service to others. The focus on strengthening families and personal growth remains a key aspect of the church's teachings. Service and humanitarian, humanitarian efforts. Here's 40 years ago. Service to others and humanitarian efforts were highlighted with leaders encouraging members to look beyond themselves and serve those in need. April 2024, the church's humanitarian efforts and the call to serve others were also prominent themes. Leaders shared examples of the church's global humanitarian work and encouraged members to participate in serving their communities. It's neat because it, it keeps going back to April conference of 1990. Let me go through here. Uh, David B. Hate, Filling the Whole Earth, Hans B. Ringer, Choose You This Day, Spencer J. Condi, Some Scriptural Lessons on Leadership. Oh, I already read that. Let me see. So this was the priesthood meeting. Okay. Sunday morning, a, a little child shall lead them. That was Thomas S. Monson. Howard W. Hunter, Standing as Witnesses of God. Carlos E. S. A., One Small Step for Man, One Giant Leap for Mankind. Marvin J. Ashton, Neither Boast of Faith Nor Mighty Works. Gordon B. Hinckley, Blessed Are the Merciful. Down in H. Oaks, World Peace. Richard G. Scott, Finding the Way Back. Um, I Will Go and Do, Teachings of a Loving Father. A Latter-day Samaritan. Preparing the heart, gratitude as a saving principle. So I, I'm not seeing differences, that many differences in in the, the sentiment in the talking points. Uh, how about adherence to commandments and standards? Here's the big one. Okay, forty years ago, talks emphasized the importance of adhering to the commandments and living according to church standards, despite societal pressures. April 2024, leaders reiterated the importance of keeping commandments and maintaining church standards, emphasizing that these principles lead to true happiness and spiritual safety. So I would say there's a lot more why. Maybe not even that. Maybe we just need to go back and look. I think we've always taught the why too, why we keep the commandments. Um, yes, there's, it's, it's less spelled out today, but I think that's because of who we're faced, the opposition. We have to continue to gather Israel. And I think we're in the ninth inning. I think that's what it is. We're in the ninth inning. Um, faith in the face of trials 40 years ago, messages of faith, endurance, and trust in God during trials and challenges were common. Offering hope and encouragement to members facing difficulties. 2024. Uh, this, this. Okay. April two, 2024. Similar messages were shared with leaders speaking about the power of faith. And overcoming challenges and the importance of relying on the Lord during difficult times. So these similarities demonstrate the church's consistent focus. Do you guys see it? Do you guys feel it? Do you understand? Now, if we go back to 1955, let's see. Let's try 1955. Now I'm going to show you as I end here, the difference between April 2024 conference compared to April 1955, okay? On keeping the commandments, not 1990, but 1955. Let's check it out. You ready? The talks on keeping the commandments from the April 2024 conference of the church, when compared to those from 1955, reveal a consistent emphasis on the importance of obedience to God's commandments as a central tenet of the faith. However, 
the context, societal changes, and the way these principles are communicated have evolved. So there you go. Societal ch challenges are different. Um, and the way we are teaching these principles and communicating them. Uh, and let's take a look. Night, April 1955. In April 1955, the world was in a period of post-World War II recovery, the early stages of the Cold War, and significant societal shifts. The talks from this era likely emphasized obedience to commandments as a bulwark against the moral uncertainties of the time. The focus had been on adherence to the commandments as a source of protection guidance and blessings from God in a world that was rapidly changing and facing new and complex challenges. The teachings, the teachings would have underscored the commandments as immutable truths that provide stability and direction. So it's not like there were some serious, you didn't see the ills of today right in our face. But you were reminded to continue to keep the commandments because there were, you could stray, you know, but you had to go find it more. But you were reminded and probably more emphasis was put on, you know, the, the, not the bad man good, but the good man better, right? What are we more like do? What are you lacking? Sins of omission, maybe even. And I, I noticed that from a long time ago. It was more like, what are you doing? What are you lacking in? What can you do more? Now, April 2024, long time from 1955, the world has seen dramatic technological advancements, right? Globalization and shifts in societal norms and values. So the talks from this last conference continue to emphasize the timeless importance of keeping commandments. However, they do so while addressing the unique challenges of modern society, such as the pervasive influence of digital media. So it's all. So in a nutshell, if you read on, um, it's still, there's still emphasis on keeping the commandments, but it's just different. You got a digital media world that we're facing. Uh, the normalization of behaviors once considered immoral. We're facing those now. Um, and the increasing societal pressure to conform to secular values. But I don't see us saying it's okay. Uh, for instance, uh, Elder Dale G. Renlund. For instance, Elder Renland, Dale G. Renland, in his talk about accessing God's power through covenants, highlighted the empowering aspect of obedience to commandments in a contemporary context. Staying on the covenant path from baptism to the temple and throughout life, we're still, we still have to keep just as clean. Relying on divine power is still a thing. And to counter the natural worldly flow. Uh, so there's somewhat of a nuanced understanding of commandment keeping as not just adherence to a set of rules, like I said before, but a journey, a covenant relationship that empowers you in a complex world, uh, happiness. Where I think we're understanding. I think the ter the talks reflect more emphasis put on the happiness that you feel, as opposed to the negative that a lot of people have already experienced. There are more people probably in the church today that have experienced the other side more than maybe in 1955. So now they understand wickedness never was happiness, right? And I think we understand it way more. So the emphasis is come back, embrace the light, embrace happiness 
from keeping commandments. So, to wrap it all up, similarities, both eras, both eras emphasize the blessings that come from obedience to God's commandments. And this could be from 1990 to 2024 or 1955 to 2024, including peace, protection, and personal growth. The fundamental doctrine that keeping the commandments is essential to returning to live with God and receive eternal life remains unchanged. Here's the differences from well, 1955 to 2024. <clears throat> in a nutshell, the primary difference lies in the application and contextualization of this principle. In 1955, the emphasis might have been more on the commandments as a defense against a world perceived as morally declining. In, in 2024, while this defense is still relevant, there's a greater focus on the positive reasons why you keep the commandments. A positive empowerment that comes from living the commandments with an understanding of the unique challenges and opportunities presented by modern society. So, while the core message of the importance of keeping the commandments has remained consistent from 1990 to 2024, which was 40 years ago, or 1955 to 2024, which is almost 70 years, right? The way church leaders address this, these principles, and specifically keeping the commandments, have only evolved to meet the needs and challenges of the members in their respective time. 